Hey y'all, hope you guys are doing good out there. All right, so today what I have is the SIG 1911X that was just released not too long ago, and then the SIG P320. Now, uh, we're gonna mainly be talking about the initial impressions of the SIG 1911X. I brought out this uh, uh, P320 M17, just as a little bit of uh, comparison, and, and I'll get to reasons why later on. First off, all right, <clears throat> the SIG 1911X. Uh, what does it come with? Well, it does not come with a 10 round magazine. Uh, it comes with two of these Mechgar eight round magazines. Uh, they functioned flawlessly at the range the other day. Now, like I said, this is only a first impressions because I've only put about uh, 50 rounds of the Aguila 230 grain full metal jacket uh, target ammo through this and uh, it ran flawlessly. Uh, no issues whatsoever. Fed everything, shot really nice, um, uh, grouped pretty well. Uh, now I'm gonna have to get used to the uh, uh, grip, the trigger and everything else a little bit more because uh, it's been a minute since I had a 1911 and it's been even longer since I had one night or in uh, 45. But anyways, so uh, let's go over the ergonomics of this pistol. It is freaking sweet. Uh, as you can see, there is just grip texture everywhere. They did an excellent job with all the checkering. Uh, the grip panels they chose for this is excellent. You can really get a nice purchase grip on it uh, even the ambi safety and as you can see well sorry, there's a little bit of shadowing there um, uh, the left side is a little bit bigger than the right side but is good positive ambi safety and unlike some of the uh, springfields i've uh, held in the past and shot in the past it does not do that little thing to where you press down on the uh, safety lever after it's hard to press and it like gives, I don't know, like maybe a eighth of an inch more. Uh, it has really good fitment. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, now as far as your slide lock slide release goes, uh, this uh, has an extended little ledge out here, uh, which is uh, a little bit more extended than most of your 1911s that you're gonna see on the market. And although I do kind of use it as a shelf, the good thing is it still uh, does a uh, last round uh, hold open. Uh, so that's excellent. So it doesn't interfere with that. But when I do reload, it, that ledge is good for being able to uh, manipulate and, and close that slide. So really excited about that. Now on the other side here, where the pin is, it is flush with the rest of the frame. It does not protrude out, so that is extremely nice. Um, let's see, what else about ergonomics? Oh, yes, yeah, so the uh, grip safety here uh, is bumped out, and I haven't had any issues with it not shooting because it's not activating enough. Um, now, let's see here. Well, or anything else, let's show it is clear. Now, let's see about that grip safety, how far you have to activate it for that trigger to go almost all the way. Um, uh, but to be honest with you, when I'm firing it, not an issue whatsoever. Uh, now, as far as the trigger goes, this thing does have a, heav or a heavier uh, trigger pull for a 1911. It is about five pounds, but good break. And the reset right there we'll do that one more time nice reset all right uh, as far as the mag release goes uh, these things shoot out of there no issues whatsoever good little textured uh, magazine release looks uh, extended a little bit more than some of the other ones uh, that I've seen in the past and it has a nice little cutout for your uh, thumb there to actuate it so ergonomics 
I give this saying a pass. Oh yeah, let's talk about the integrated magwell while we're talking about uh, ergos and looks. So you do have a uh, two-piece magwell that comes with the saying. Now it is not perfectly blended uh, like you would get with some of your other custom and, and higher-end guns, uh, but it's it's still a pretty nice magwell. Um, goes very nice with the gun and does help uh, feeding in those rounds. So I'm happy about that. Now the looks of this, the aesthetics, uh, that's what kind of won me over. Uh, SIG 1911s, uh, th I would say they're middle in the road when it comes to shooting performance. Uh, I'd say they're about on par as Springfield, uh, or as, uh, yeah, Springfield Armories. Uh, but the aesthetics and what they were able to do with this uh, for the price point uh, is amazing. So it has the same lines as the 320 series, which I absolutely love. Uh, it, it just looks like a gun meant for business, right? And they are optics cut. Uh, so this is primarily for their uh, Romeo, yeah, what is it? The SIG Romeo X compact sight uh, that came out not too long ago. And I do want to put one of those on here uh, pretty soon. Uh, I do not know if it will uh, accommodate the 407Ks. Uh, at least, will it be able to accommodate uh, fit it to where uh, it's not going to be bouncing around and to where you can co-witness. I'm not sure on that. Um, I wish I had one to put on here t to where I could actually show you guys, but unfortunately I don't. Uh, now as far as the sights go, it is the x-ray sights uh, that are uh, now pretty common on most of your SIGs. Uh, so pretty decent sights. And it does look like it is the same type of cutout as uh, they are on the 320 series. Uh, now I may be wrong on that, but they look pretty dang similar. So let's clear out this M17. All right, good and clear. So if you take a look at least at the front sights, they look very similar. In fact, I think both of them are stamped with, what is it, number six or something on there. Yeah, I think number six and number six. So. Anyways, I think they're the same, uh, but I may be incorrect. Now the finish on the uh, 1911X is a Nitron type finish. Um, and I really do like these types of finishes. Uh, now how durable are the Nitron finishes? Uh, yeah, they will rub off after a while. Like you can see right here, the. Uh, uh, grip safety or beaver tail safety thing there. Um, it is starting to show just a little bit of silverish uh, rubbing up against the uh, frame there, but um, it gives that really nice deep gray look. Uh, like it's like splitting hair is, is it black or is it extremely dark gray? Uh, personally, I like it because it contrasts uh, pretty nice against the grips and, and the black controls uh, and the barrel. Uh, to where it just gives an awesome aesthetic look. Like I said, that's just aesthetics functionally or functionally. Um, I, I think it'll provide decent corrosion resistance, but with any 1911, you should be oiling the shit out of this thing anyways, any chance you get, anytime after the range. That's why I said with 1911s. Remember, these things are not uh, like your uh, striker fire guns of today, your Glocks, your 320s, MMPs, uh, you know, all those, these things do require uh, maintenance and cleaning. And as long as you do that, they're going to run pretty good for you. Now, as far as the internals go, uh, or well, let's just talk about the guide rod and spring. So it is a GI type guide rod and spring. So no one piece guide rod to where you have to use a paper clip or a hex head uh, to try to take it apart pretty basic uh, regular bushing there so no it is not a bull barrel uh, uh, but it is really good uh, tight fitment barrel fitment is good the slide fitment is excellent i'm not seeing any type of wobble or anything like that uh, it is just pretty good and tight so i'm really enjoying that um, <clears throat> the slim to fright or the frame to slide fitment is about that of uh, a lot of the Springfield Armories that I've seen in the past. But unlike Springfield Armory, 
I had the uh, emissary uh, before in the past, a 9mm. This thing ran right out of the box. Uh, of course, this is chamber in 45, uh, so you have a lot of low black and everything else forcing that slide to kick out the uh, spent rounds. Uh, but not one malfunction with this. When I had an emissary, when it was working, it shot nice. But uh, when I first got, it, I had to take or I had to send it back to uh, the Springfield Armory just because that dang thing uh, would not run. Uh, they actually had to resize the barrel, do some other stuff for it to actually run. Versus this, uh, ran right out of the box. So, say good on you for that. So as I said earlier, uh, I put both these out here for semi what comparison. Yes, this is a polymer frame striker fire gun against you know an all metal, you know, 1911 hammer fired gun. Yes, there are a lot of internal differences. Internally, not the same at all. But uh, the reason I'm doing a little bit of a comparison because we all know the 1911 was a service pistol right at least what this thing was based off of was a service pistol in the u.s armed forces for a great many number of years um, and yeah they were uh, rattling like crazy at the end but they were great guns for many years uh, and now we have the sig 320 and it's kind of funny because on the outside at least with maybe it's just me with the uh, thumb safety you know it's kind of like an homage back to the the past but with like a different little flare on it you know um, so I just thought that was kind of interesting and as far as manual arms uh, operating it with the uh, magazine and and everything else uh, and slide lock I treat these the same when I'm at the range right so after it gets back to slide lock reload and then with my support hand come up over and hit the slide release that way right and it's the same thing with the m17 just because it's a little bit harder to hit that slide release with the uh, manual safety right there you can do it but uh, in my experience it's just been easier after you reload the magazine you just hit the button just like you would on 1911 reload so that's why I have these two out there uh, and plus the slide cuts here are very similar. SIG always does a very nice job of putting their own little twist and aesthetic on their guns. So 1911X. Um, this is just a first impressions video so I cannot tell you if this gun is the, the absolute one to buy and the end all be all absolute most reliable you know for any situation uh, like I said only 50 rounds you cannot judge a gun off of that but it's very promising that the first 50 no malfunctions especially for a 1911 usually you can tell them right away if there's uh, something not fitting right uh, but uh, yeah for about 1500 bucks so my local store here had theirs uh, for sale for about 1400 ish and uh, after taxes, you know, it would be around that 1500 mark. But for a gun that you're looking that is aesthetically pleasing, that has good positive safety on there, um, some other accoutrements like the extended slide stop slide release, a nice light rail, a mag well, and optics cut. You can't really find any good reputable brands that's been doing this for a while, uh, especially US made. Uh, that has all these for that price point. Uh, I think they're going to be more common in the future, uh, but SIG uh, usually does a good job with their stuff and they have pretty decent customer service. Um, now one thing to note, all the SIG 1911s are 80 series, alright? So there's other videos on the internet, uh, 80 series versus 70 series, what's the difference, what's the best and everything. You guys can go watch those on your own, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe all uh, SIGs are of the 80 series. Means they have a few actual safeties in there. Are they needed or not? Eh, that's up for the debate. But <clears throat> anyways, um, this if you've ever handled or seen a SIG, was it the Emperor Scorpion 1911 45? 
uh, this is very similar to it. Basically, they just changed up some of the aesthetics. Uh, the shape of the uh, thumb safety and the takedown lever are a little bit different. Um, and of course, the optics cut. Uh, but everything else, like at least internally and like functionally, is about the same. So if you like that gun, then this one I think you're absolutely going to love. All right, so if you have any questions, please post them down in the comments. Uh, like I said, I will show more footage of uh, me taking this out to the range later. Uh, first 50 rounds, I just wanted to get acquainted with it, um, you know, and just number one, see if it worked, which thank God it did. And, uh, you know, just kind of getting used to the gun. But I am going to show more range footage. Oh, but as far as accuracy, this ain't is good so far. At uh, 10 yards, making good, decent headshots, easy all day, every day. And I shot out all the way out to 25 yards, making really good uh, uh, torso shots. And at 7 yards on end, you know, rounds hitting rounds. Or, you know, holes going into holes, I guess. So, uh so yeah, it's it's pretty accurate. Um, the, like I said, the, the trigger may need a little bit of work in the future, but I will see if that <clears throat> will wear in by itself over time, or maybe it's something I may have to do, uh, you know, as far as, you know, maybe changing out some stuff. Uh, but I'm going to try to keep this thing as stock as possible just because it is nice, it's running well, so, you know, I don't really want to mess with something if if it's shooting good enough for me. Well everybody thanks for uh letting me ramble on and showing you this uh awesome gun and yeah if you have any questions or comments uh or any other information that i may not know about you know such as hey the sites you know what exactly you know are they you know are they for the 320 as well or whatever if you have any other additional information that uh that i didn't put out please leave them in there all right guys well yeah have fun be safe Love yourselves, love one another. Later.